If you are a holder or a stacker of gold, you've got to be pretty happy right about now. Although, if you are planning to make a purchase, well, maybe not so much. But it's exciting all the same to see gold's price reach that psychological $2,000 an ounce level again and above that, and we could likely see it climb even further because it's now outperforming parts of the stock market. But don't get too happy and excited yet. That's right, with everything, there comes a balance, and usually the markets tend to correct at some form or another. But I'll explain exactly why in this video as we explore. Yeah, it is the weekend and gold is up over $2,000 an ounce, at least as I record this video. And we are likely going to see those numbers climb as more uncertainty will make its way across the, uh, the sphere, the markets indeed. And that's exactly why gold is up. It's economic and geopolitical, especially geopolitical uncertainty. You know, uh, I'm literally recording this video hours before it's going to be released. And anything can happen between the time I press the record button and show you these lovely metals to the time when we see things change in the news. And there's a lot of stuff happening, especially geopolitically, that is front and center in Israel right now. And we are at the cusp of a ground invasion. By the time you uh, hear and see this video, likely that invasion may have already started or there may be more incursions that have occurred uh, since then. But nonetheless, we know it's coming at one form or another. Also, we have the backdrop of the United States officially involved now in counterstrikes against attacks on troops uh, in Syria and in Iraq. Uh, these attacks are done by these groups that are fronted by uh, Iran, the proxy groups. And uh, right now, the latest news is that Russia is not liking this at all, especially for those retaliatory strikes in Syria. And how much Russia is involved, I'm not sure. There's, ar there's already been talk that North Korea very well may have been involved in uh, planning and or sending money and resources to Hamas. We just don't know yet. We're still early in, in, in a lot of this stuff. But nonetheless, make no mistake, Iran most definitely is involved. We know that for a matter of fact. They are the largest state sponsor of terror. And there's real fear that this thing could widen. And we know that uh, enthusiastically, some of these nations are uh, showing the worth, showing their solidarity with the terrorists and with Hamas. And so that ever expansion uh, means that there's going to uh, likely be some uh, some uh, pulling in from other areas. Could it be other countries as well? Uh, NATO countries? Who knows? It just depends on how wide and expansive this is. And the most crucial area is in the north of Israel. Uh, is to see what Hezbollah will do. And all of this means that the gold is reacting to these activities and movements, and all in the, with a backdrop of what we see happen in Ukraine. As the world spins around, uh, events in other parts of the world, they do not stop because of what happens in Israel. And the war in Ukraine is still raging. It just is not being talked about. It is not front and center in the news uh, anymore. People are growing war-weary in that region, but in Israel, it is on front and center of the radar. And right now, that uncertainty and the media coverage of the events and all the protests around the world in support of Hamas and, and supposedly Palestine, uh, that is complicating matters uh, even more. And who knows how, how far this thing will spread. Uh, that's the concern. That unknown factor is what is causing gold to go up. And folks, I want to remind you of something. That's not a good reason for gold to, be, to, to really celebrate why gold is going high. Yes, gold, in a sense, loves chaos. It reacts to chaos. And it's kind of ironic because chaos is really not what gold is about. 
In fact, its mere its the very existence of its physical properties means that it is the ultimate and most stable form of value and wealth that is out there. That's the beauty of gold. It is the ultimate stable money. As well as being sound, it's sound and stable. Much more stable than this, which is on a, in a sense, uh, a, a, a an event of hyper or inflation is not hyper inflated yet but it is certainly not in the control of the federal reserve at this point in time and we keep on hearing the headline news that well inflation is is getting under control well is it yes they're using the core inflation numbers to back it up by a few tenths of a percentage point but that's not enough to really to move the needle it obviously is not enough to move the cpi numbers the consumer price index is still strong at 3.7 percent uh, year over year and folks remember though the high was at 9.1 percent all the numbers that were reported after that 9.1 percent number are increases above and beyond that 9.1 percent so those those are some factors that we must take into consideration when we're looking at inflation and we also have uh, supposedly good uh, numbers that are coming uh, from the gross domestic product and why is this occurring well more money's flowing in because uh, there's more money out there and things are more expensive which means those costs of those goods and services are causing uh, the gdp numbers to go up because everything is more expensive and people are probably buying things as well and continuing to do so to buying things because they're scared they're just going to keep going up and we've seen that happen before and so some of these numbers as well the way that they're being reported and skewed i believe is because well we are in a heavily heavy political season now we're starting to get into it pretty hot and heavy we're almost a year away from the presidential elections and when we think about that we know that the chefs at the cook the books club will continue to do what they do in order to uh, make things look good for the current administration uh, never underestimate the three-letter agencies to politicize any and everything, including agencies that are explicitly not meant to be political. We've seen proof and evidence of that time and time again, especially in the last couple of years. So this is why I'm referring to them as the chefs at the Cook the Books Club, because they're cooking the books, not in favor of you and me, but in favor of them and their power control centers that they have in the administrative state. But one thing we can do to protect ourselves is to preserve our wealth because they who have the gold they make the rules and even though you see some gold here in this mine i'm not making any rules except other than the fact that i don't i need net less and less really of their of their um markets and manipulation that they occur naturally in terms of uh the derivatives markets and the like and in terms of how dollars and what the federal reserve does because gold is the ultimate backstop it is the ultimate insurance policy against all of that and so in that sense, you're empowering yourself. You are becoming your own central bank with gold. Now, these geopolitical events, uh, everything that we're talking about in terms of wars and rumors of wars, well, sooner or later, there's going to be a new normal, just as like we've seen with Ukraine. It's not so much in the news anymore. Yea, though that war is still raging, the markets have kind of subsided. There's a lot of psychology in the markets, which means we should be prepared for gold to fall back down. And also keep in mind that uh, even though it may fall some, it's not going to fall by a whole lot, I don't think. I think we're starting to solidify new floors, new steps in the upwards direction for gold because it, it is a more stable store of wealth and it's going to be back, backdropped by inflation and what we're seeing and what the Fed is doing. Likely they're not going to raise interest rates even amidst supposedly good GDP numbers and they are going to continue to uh, you know, showcase and do use the tools that they have and we're going to see other information and data come out and likely uh, there's going to be some sort of correction here. We also must keep this in perspective. Gold and silver's price, especially silver, um, we see is performing poorly compared to gold in recent weeks here. Um, and that has people concerned as well, which is this is one of the reasons why, by the way, I have concentrated more of my efforts towards gold, although I still believe in silver. 
but I believe gold is the ultimate stable store of value. Stable stability being the key thing, and it's showing really its stability to some extent in these uncertain times, even though we may see a pullback in the metal. And perspective is everything as well, too. We're nowhere near the all-time high for gold's price. Adjusted for inflation, that price is north of $3,000 an ounce. And the times that it had met that were anomalies. Uh, even when it was $1,921 an ounce in 2011 adjusted for inflation, I still don't think gold is near that all-time high either adjusted for inflation. Nominally, though, we are seeing the price get very close to its, its all-time high there. But that does not mean that it can't go higher amidst some of these forces that we see come into play. Inflation being the one factor that we've not seen in 40 years amidst all the other uncertainty and, and concerns that we have out there economically. Uh, we're in a very st fragile situation here in the United States in terms of our economy, and it wouldn't take much for the levy to break. Uh, on a couple of different fronts here. And we know what we've seen in the past year in terms of these bank closures, which by the way, I still believe the bank closures that we have seen are a real concern, folks, even though some of the earlier ones were kind of more pigeonholed as to what they were involved in, some of the riskier crypto uh, spaces and the like, and, and where some of that is, the fact that several of them close and have expanded, um, and the contagion factor has been there. And we've been months and we've months since we've seen anything semi-major uh, closed, but recently we did see one come close. There have been some bailouts by other banks and institutions. Why? Because it's in their self-interest to do so. The bailouts will continue until they can't. And then it could see a contagion factor that could come into play there. So keep that in mind as well. And, but no matter what happens, even if the banking sector does recover, uh, there's other uh, uncertain factors that we have coming into play. And inflation is certainly one of the biggest things where if we do see a recession, we could very well see stagflation. Stagflation is something we've not seen in a while either. And that is going to be good for gold, I believe, in due course. There's only so much uh, time uh, and so much that can happen with the economy before we start to see uh, a drastic change uh, in the in the whole spectrum of, of what's going on in the markets and gold is going to hold fast during that and this is one of the reasons why I hold it another reason why I hold gold is because well it's beautiful and really is a lovely metal in its different forms and alloys as you can see here it uh, it shines in different ways depending on the finish depending on the strike and depending on the alloy so I'll continue to hold this medal. So I hope you found this video informative, insightful, and educational, and somewhat entertaining. I would like to extend a multitude of gratitude to each and every one of you for taking the time to watch and to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.